He didn't come here to willingly fucking die. You can't be that stupid. He was tortured and murdered because of who he was and what he was teaching. And his mission to empower those that followed him, follow me, I am the way, never meant worship me, you're inferior to me. It meant I'm here to teach you how to become what I've already become. You can achieve it too. Let me show you the way. Let me show you how. And then when you become the spiritual warriors that you're meant to become, you can rise up against all this crap and we can remove it from our planet. Sound familiar to today? That's what we're here to do today in our current time. But the crucifixion was twisted. The truth twisted, of course, lies. And the brainwashing was, he died for you. No, he died because you were too weak and pathetic and, and powerless to stand up and rise up against the evils who were going to torture and murder him. You weren't willing to do what he taught you to do to step into your power. He was murdered because not enough people rose up together to take down the elites that were ruling the world that he came here to warn you against. Welcome to Masters of Self University Podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, spiritual warriors. Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast. I'm Rachel Fiore, your host for this episode. In this episode, we're going to talk about sacrifice, suffering, and the elites who program the collective to sacrifice and to suffer for their gain, their benefit, for their entitlement that they carry, the entitlement programs that they carry. We're going to dive into this. Sacrificing energy, sacrifice energy, that vibrational frequency and the entitlement frequency are two sides of the same coin, two sides of the same coin. Okay. We have been incarnated into a dualistic world, a dualistic reality. This is the reality of separation. Okay, that doesn't make it real. That doesn't make it the reality we need to continue to participate in or experience. It is a created reality of separation, which means duality. So when you still come from dualistic or separation consciousness, which is the same thing, then two things need to be in place for there to be balance. Two opposing things need to be in place for there to be any level of balance. Okay. It doesn't mean it's a good balance. Balance isn't always, isn't good. We, this spiritual war that we're in, because we are in one. And a lot of you, if you listen to me, you are some of the spiritual warriors that incarnated to participate on and become the light that you need to become, to become the spiritual warrior that you need to become in order to heal what is happening, to transform what is happening, been happening for centuries on this planet. Okay. So you understand that you were born into the created reality of separation, me versus you, them versus us. That's a dualistic nature. That's a dualistic reality. That is not the truth of the universe. So here's my, here's my punch in the face. You ready? Here's the first one. For all the people who have learned very incorrectly, for all the people who have learned, well, you know, there's a dualistic nature. There's always good and evil. There's always light and dark. There's always, you can't have this without the other. There's no such thing as light without dark. Well, you're referring to like good and evil. There's no such thing as good without the evil. The evil lets us know that the good is there. That's all fucking bullshit. That's all part of the brainwashing to keep you where you are so that you continue to consent to and create yourself without realizing it, the evil that reigns on this planet, that rules this planet. The entitled elites 
that are the energy vampires that enslave everybody, that suck your life force energy out of you, that suck all your money out of you, use you for slave work and slave labor, labor. Okay. That entitlement program, those entitlement programs create the sacrifice slash suffering programs that you are all consenting to, whether you realize it or not. We need to learn energetics on a deeper level. And that's what we're going to dive into this, this program of the two sides of the same coin of sacrifice and entitlement and how that works on the macro level and how that works on the micro level in you and your individual lives. Now, I could do a three-part series on this just to barely scratch the surface of this teaching, okay? And I want to say this to some of you that when I start diving into this, for some of you, I say this out of compassion and out of understanding, never as an insult for the love of God. Don't ever project that crap onto me. I don't come from that place. I don't come from judgment or you're inferior or any of that nonsense. So if you ever feel that way, those are your own programs that you're projecting. I'm saying this right now out of compassion for some of you who may have a hard time understanding this teaching. I want you to hang in there if for some reason this particular teaching is hard to follow for you. Okay. I'm just saying that I have compassion that don't give up <laughs> if it is. Some of you will listen to this and totally understand it, of course, but there may be some of you that have a hard time with this one. So I just want to put that out there and, you know, become the way of patience with yourself and with the teaching. If that is the case and it's, and you have a hard time understanding everything that's going to be offered. And I always try to make these extraordinarily elevated teachings as simple as possible because we can all learn this stuff. We all have the capacity to, no matter what level you're on, right? We do. And we can all become very elevated so that this stuff is just easy and we become the things we need to become in this lifetime as far as the wisdom that we need to become, the way of wisdom. But if you are at a lower level of consciousness yet where this could be a challenging teaching, just have patience with yourself. Save it. Listen to it, though. Don't not listen to it. Try to stick into the end and come back. Save this and come back, you know, in four months and listen to it again. So I don't want anybody to give up if this seems like it's over your head a little bit. Okay. For everyone else, just enjoy it. <laughs> but don't give up if this one is a little tough for some of you. So it cannot be the easiest thing to first when you first hear that sacrifice and entitlement are two sides of the same coin. But that's because we live in a a dualistic created duality. We live in a dualistic reality, but a created one. The more we evolve. So all those people that say you can only have, you know, you can't have good without evil is the fucking bullshit. That's part of the brainwashing. Hi, you got to wake up to this layer now. Wake up, elevate out of this crap that doesn't even exist. There's no such thing that evil needs to exist. No such thing. Think about the level of brainwashing if you believe that. Oh, my God. That's to justify evil being on the planet so that you consent to it. <laughs> so that you consent to it and you will not rise up and become the warrior you need to become to completely extinguish the evil on this planet. It does not need to exist. It is just created because people and beings have free will choice. And that's what they're choosing to create. We don't need to tolerate evil being on this planet. We don't need to tolerate evil being in our government, in, in world leaders. A lot of you know what the WHO is, World Health Organization. I hate to say that. This is for entertainment purposes only. There's my disclaimer. But that group of people are a bunch of absolute psychopathic cult leader lunatics that are here to take the fucking human rights away from everybody and turn you into more slaves to a deeper level, greater degree of slave, including over your body autonomy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go freaking look it up and go down your own rabbit hole. That kind of stuff happening where we think we don't have the power to change what certain people are doing. Well, what am I going to do? I'm the only one person. You are in the sacrificing energy, the suffering energy, which is where they want you to be. They're doubling down all the entitled elites right now. They're doubling down in their positions of quote unquote power, because they do see people rising up. They do see people becoming more empowered. They do see people healing themselves and elevating out of a lot of their programming and their brainwashing in order to rise up and no longer tolerate and stand for being robbed blind with taxes. 
our food being poisoned. There's, there's forever chemicals in our food, especially in the United States. I mean, come on. Okay. Our water, you know, there, there's the, the parasites and the, and the traces of pharmaceuticals in our water and all the harmful things that are put in our water, all of that stuff. Okay. That's a system put in place so that we can be enslaved and be put in a sick system so that the elites that rule the world and all major governments and blah, 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 can benefit from us. The entitled benefit from us sacrificing. So let's go into this. You ready? Sacrifice entitlement, two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist without the other. Ooh! Remember that if you remember nothing else from this episode. One cannot exist without the other. And if you, the majority of the, co of the collective, have been brainwashed and programmed to sacrifice, and that is what keeps the elites in place, the entitled asshole psychopaths that are robbing us blind and poisoning us and blah, 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 and enslaving us, they're kept in place energetically when we continue to sacrifice, when we play that role. So you need to wake up to this programming, and I'm hoping you're going to wake up to it today, okay? Sacrificing the sacrifices of the enslaved, listen carefully, it holds the entitlement matrix in place for the elites. It holds this type of matrix in place. So understand when people refer to the matrix, the matrix, third dimensional matrix, guys, they're not just one matrix that does not exist. There's tons of them all interwoven and interconnected together. There's all different types of matrices that exist simultaneously that make up the what everybody refers to refers to as, quote unquote, the matrix. That matrix is not one matrix. It's a system of matrices. Do you understand? So it's very important to understand that part that, quote unquote, the matrix that everybody talks about that we all you know know about. That is a system of matrices. There are many, many, many singular matrices, <laughs> matrices that exist to create the big matrix. Do you understand? Okay. But the, the biggest, biggest, biggest matrix that has to exist for the most part where all the other smaller systems of matrices are functioning and included inside of is the enslavement system, which means the system of sacrificing one large group of people sacrifice so that one group of people um, benefit. Those are the entitled. That's the entitled side of the coin. OK, so. Sacrificing an entitlement, anything that benefits each other in duality and creates a weird balance, even if it's a dysfunctional, unhealthy, negative balance, it's still balancing. One cannot function without the other. That's what it, what I mean by balance is energetic balance. One cannot exist without the other. So you have to all be sacrificing in order for the entitled vibrational frequencies to continue to be there. The entitled vibrational frequencies that are there they create the sacrificing energy, the brainwashing, so you will sacrifice everything. And I'm going to get to what that means in a minute. That, that's what holds the entitlement in place. And then they get to rob you blind. They get to siphon your life force energy, your financial energy and resources, your health so that you pay for their sick system. Do you understand? That's the goal. So you have to stay in consent to, you have to stay in the arena of sacrificing the willingness and the consent to sacrifice for them. All right. And then they get to keep, you know, siphoning your energy and resources and finances and benefit from you. Okay. So th those energies, anything that's in duality that balances each other out, like one cannot exist without the other, they always vibrate within three octaves of one another. So they'll fluctuate a little bit, but there's three octaves that things vibrate. And that's where you'll, you'll, manifest the same things over and over and over again. You can't change one little thing, heal one little thing in your life and then have, generally speaking, and then have massive, oh, I'm on a brand, I'm on a whole new timeline that doesn't exist in my reality anymore. It usually does not work that way <laughs> you, unless you heal something massive because you're still vibrating within several octaves 
of the thing that you're trying to no longer be a part of. You don't, you want to unplug from that matrix. You can't just change one little thing about your life. It isn't enough because you're still vibrating within three octaves of what, how that matrix vibrates. Okay. So if you're in a sacrificing energy, you have massive healing to do before that entitlement energy no longer affects you in your existence, in your personal life, in your relationships, or in the world. Do you understand? Okay. I hope you're following me so far. So the programmed frequency of sacrifice, how we are programmed to sacrifice. Sacrifice means suffering. It is suffering. So that definition to sacrifice means I'm willing to suffer. Now, language is limiting. I already know some of you with religion. I haven't mentioned religion yet. The brainwashing goes real friggin' deep when it comes to religion teaching you to sacrifice and tithe and give up and sacrifice and sacrifice. That is the, that is selected. Those programs are selected. You are brainwashed in a very specific way in order for the entitled to continue to benefit from you and siphon your energy and your finances and your resources and your energy and your effort and your everything. Okay. So the program frequency of sacrifice means suffering. Okay. And I've already said language is limiting. So this is the definition of sacrifice. It's a very negative. It's a very twisted. It's a very sick. It's a very dysfunctional, unhealthy, horrific vibrational frequency to be in. Okay. So I need to make this distinction for you in, in continuing this. We can use that same word, the word sacrifice, and it could mean a positive thing. I am not referring to, oh, I have to make sacrifices. Um, for my business, for my business to thrive. Like there's times when I have to really work hard and grind guys, that's selfless service that can, you can fluctuate up and down where things are, um, flowing and they're coming and they're easy. And then there's times when you have to work extra hard. That is a normal ebb and flow. It isn't the extreme polar opposite of a dualistic way to function in life, in your life, in your relationship or in a business, for example. Okay. So you're not creating duality here. I'm not talking about sacrifice in, um, I have to sacrifice my time and energy. Things are extra hard right now. Money's a little tight or, oh my gosh, I really want to take these classes. I really want to go do this coaching. Oh, I know this would help me so much. I can't do it unless I get another part-time job. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to get a part-time job and I'm going to take these classes. Oh my God. That's so much work right now. Oh, let me take a breath. I'm going to sacrifice my time and energy. And yet that definition of sacrifice, I'm, we're going to change that. That's not, I don't want to use that word sacrifice anymore. Don't use it. There is a healthy level, a healthy level of, I'm going to give extra time, extra, there's a conscientious choice because I'm getting something in return. Do you understand? That's balance. And it might be really hard for a few months six months or a year because you want to take these classes, you want to learn this stuff and you have to work extra in order to earn more money. But the extra job brings you more money to, so that stay with my example. In this example, the extra job, the extra money, although it's extra work, extra effort, extra time is giving you the extra money to pay for the things that you number one, enjoy, want to take, want to learn, because that's going to help heal you and elevate you out of a current situation you're trying to elevate out of. You want to expand and heal and elevate and whatever your goals are. That job is bringing you the money to give you the freedom to pay for those classes. Those classes, they're giving you the skills, the energetic transformation, the wisdom, all the things that you're looking for in order to then elevate out of your scenario. That is is an actual balance even when, so that's selfless service. That is the way of selfless service. Do you understand? 12, number 12 out of, out of 20 of the universal ways of oneness. Go, go grab the book on Amazon. If you haven't read it yet, 20 universal ways of oneness. That is actually selfless service. Why? I'm willing to give, give, give my time, my effort, my energy, um, in another job in taking classes and, paying for the classes because the people who teach them deserve to get the money that they're teaching and giving their time and energy and effort and wisdom to help me. This is oneness. 
Do you see how all of those pieces go together in order for all of us to benefit and thrive? Do you see it? That's oneness. And even when you have to work extra hard uh, for a while in order to get what the things that you want to get you to the next level, that's an ebb and flow of selfless service. That will then boost you up to another level, another timeline. You'll have another skill set, wisdom, elevated vibrational frequency because you've done all this healing, whatever. I'm going to stay with this one example. You're doing that. And even if it's exhausting and you have to work extra hard for three months or six months or a year to get all that done, it's still selfless service. And then you get to back off of that and you get to shift into a different form of selfless service where you get to rest so much more. I'm going to take a break now. I'm elevated. Things are coming to me. I got a new job. I got these skills. I started my own business. Do you, do you see? All of that is actually in oneness. So I want to be very clear as I continue to talk about the negative sacrifice and the entitled who benefit from your sacrifice, that it never means we don't deserve things in entitlement. I'll get more to that later. And in sacrificing, it doesn't mean that we don't work extra hard sometimes or that we don't have to grind sometimes. Sometimes we, we do. Sometimes we have to work extra hard to get the things that we want. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not negative. A dualistic bullshit spiritual teaching, that new age crap that is out there is you just manifest whatever the fuck you want and you can just have whatever the fuck you want whenever you want it. How entitled are you? Jesus Christ. Really? With no thought, no consideration, no fucking regard for anybody else and how that affects anyone else. Your level of selfish selfishness, your level of entitlement, because that's how the elites that rule the world function. Get out of the entitlement programs if you're, you're some of the ones that run them. Why do you think narcissists always look for empaths to be in relationship with? Because empaths are willing to sacrifice. <laughs> They're willing to suffer. We want to change that. That's not good. But narcissists are the entitled ones. I'm entitled to your energy, your um, unending loyalty, your support of me, your patience with me. I'm willing to take your time, your energy, all of your effort, all your loyalty, and I'm willing to use it and siphon it to benefit from you and even your money and resources sometimes. I'm willing to take that from you because I'm the narcissist and you're the empath. Okay? Those entitlement programs, take, 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 and it's in this very arrogant, I deserve just because I exist. That's entitlement. I deserve it. Do you though? But do you? I deserve it just because I'm alive on this planet. R really? That's it? That's all? Because your existence here impacts everybody around you. It impacts the earth. It impacts the environment. It impacts loved ones, family members, friends. It impacts the business that you're a part of, your entitlement, your negative energy sets a tone uh, in the corporation that you work for or the business or the organization that you work for or volunteer in. I don't care if you're volunteering at an animal shelter. If you're a fucking asshole and have a negative attitude, you're not doing good there. Like you impact the people around you, the beings around you, and you're either doing that in an elevated way vibrationally by showing up as the universal ways of oneness, becoming them, or you're doing it because you're running this. At today, we're focusing on these two main programs, sacrifice or entitlement energy. All right. So the programmed frequency of sacrifice, the literally the very intentional, we're going to program this into the collective the sacrifice program exists across the entire world, the entire human collective. It's just, do you fall into it to what degree? Everybody falls into it to some degree, unless you are the elites that literally rule the entire world. You're not sacrificing shit. You're just, you're, you're gaining all the things from everybody else's sacrifice. This was anchored in, take a breath. <laughs> this was anchored in way more deeply during the time that Jesus was alive. Whoo! Anybody that comes from a religious background, you haven't woken up yet to what religion is. It's going to punch you in the fucking face. Jesus sacrificed himself for your sins. He died for your sins is the biggest load of motherfucking bullshit 
He was murdered. What do you mean he died? First of all, he died. He was tortured and murdered. He was nailed to a cross. He was tortured and murdered. He didn't just die. He didn't show up and say, I'm willing to die right now because you all have sins and I'm willing to take your sins with me. I consent to this. <laughs> that isn't what fucking happened. A being, a radical, spiritual, warrior, badass of an enlightened teacher was willing to show up and speak out against the GOV at the time, the people in power, the people who ruled over other people at the time. He was willing to speak up and speak out against religion including the one he was born into. Hello, wake up. Against the other one. I don't want to say too many, too many key words that'll get this flagged and taken down. This is all for entertainment purposes only. Just remember that. Do your own research. He spoke out against, he taught people to elevate and become what he achieved, what he already achieved and became that fully enlightened being that he was, the teacher that he was to bring you truth and wisdom that he fearlessly spoke out against religion, people in charge, people in power, governments. That's what he came here to do. He didn't come here to willingly fucking die. He didn't just, I'm going to die now and take all your sins with me. You can't be that stupid in your brainwashing. He was tortured and murdered because of who he was and what he was teaching. And his mission to empower those that followed him, follow me, I am the way, never meant worship me, you're inferior to me. It meant I'm here to teach you how to become what I've already become. You can achieve it too. Let me show you the way. Let me show you how. And then when you become the spiritual warriors that you're meant to become, you can rise up against all this crap and we can remove it from our planet. Sound familiar to today? I could be talking about today or a couple thousand years ago. That's what we're here to do today in our current time. But the crucifixion was twisted. The truth twisted, of course. Lies, lies, lies. And the brainwashing was, he died for you. No, he died because you were too weak and pathetic and, and powerless to stand up and rise up against the evils who were going to torture and murder him. You weren't willing to do what he taught you to do to step into your power. He was murdered because not enough people rose up together to take down the elites that were ruling the world that he came here to warn you against. Hmm. Sounds like today. So when the, the programming of sacrifice, he was sacrificed for you. Oh. Are you starting to see the twisted manipulation here? The brainwashing? So that the brainwashing is you must sacrifice versus rise up against versus become enlightened yourselves. You must stay inferior to him and to the powers that be. You're inferior to him. You need to sacrifice. Because of what he sacrificed for you. Are you feeling the vibrational frequencies of that? Of the brainwashing? What that translates to. That brainwashing translates people who want to, who are willing to and consent to being used. Suffering. You're consenting to suffering. You're willing to sacrifice your time for money, your energy, your effort, your time for money. And I'm talking about sacrifice. I'm not talking about earning a living. I'm not talking about working hard. I'm not talking about uh, pouring your passion in and earning money. And I deserve the money that I earn because I work hard for it. The incredible things that I, that I do, that I offer, my abilities in the wisdom that I offer, the teaching, the energetic architect that I can work with energy and all the different energetic programs that you have inside of you, everything that I offer, I have devoted my entire life in the way of loyalty to this and to you in the way of selfless service. When I show up like that, 
You better fucking believe I deserve to get paid for it. The fuck are you still doing your sacrificing bullshit, keeping the elites that rule this world in place because you think healers should do it for free. You're brainwashed by religions, whether you're religious or not. That's the programming of sacrifice that was put in place over the quote unquote crucifixion of Jesus. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Look what he sacrificed for you. You have to sacrifice like him. Renounce everything. Go without. Sacrifice all of your time for money so you have no ability to be a loving, supportive family member and spend quality time with your family because you work 90 hours a fucking week. So you sacrifice this. It's think about what sacrifice. You have to go without. You have to sacrifice in order to get this thing over here. So you're sacrificing your family or close relationships. I mean, healthy relationships for a career. You sacrifice money and freedom for a peaceful life of your choosing. So, oh, well, I don't want to work in the corporate world. So, I guess I'll just be poor. I'll be broke. But at least I'm my own boss. Why can't you have both? I'm going deeper than just because the system that we live in. Why can't you have both? Because you still live in a dualistic world reality that was created for you to be brainwashed, to tricked into and manipulated into consenting to that you still hold vibrationally in existence yourself when you think what it means to be more spiritual and more enlightened means to give everything up. If you genuinely don't want to have a lot of things, then don't have, a, you can have that choice. There's not, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you think having money and having financial freedom and earning a lot of money makes you less spiritual, you're a brainwashed idiot. Wake up. All of those things that I've mentioned, like all of these beliefs that are put into place, the programming that are put in place in order for you to stay in a sacrifice as a sacrificial land. Like I'm going to sacrifice all this shit, my, my time for money. Like I can't have both. Like I can't work really hard and give my time because I'm building something simultaneously. I'm building a business, this really beautiful, wonder, high vibrational business. And so yeah, I'm sacrificing my time right now, but it's because I'm earning and building something simultaneously. Do you see it? That's oneness. And then I get to back off and I get to receive the fruits of my labor. And then I don't have to work so hard. I can build it to a place where I can only work part time. I can work my passion. I can pour my passion into my job or my career or my soul's mission. And I benefit. I reap the reward of that on all the levels that I can reap the abundance and all kinds of abundance, watching people heal and elevate and becoming empowered and being able to do the same thing. I guided them to be able to do that. That's abundance. Being paid for my services and what I deserve to be paid. That's abundance. Being honored for my time because of the level that I offer when you're receiving time from me. That's a different level of abundance. And that's all oneness. Do you understand? Okay. So. All of those things where you're sacrificing, suffer, sacrificing, so I have to sacrifice, I have to give up, I have to go without, I have to suffer, 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 suffer. All of those programs that you consent to, whether you realize you're consenting to or not, all of that anchors in and keeps the programs of entitlement activated and stable at the macro level in our entire world. Because entitled people feed off of the slave labor. That's what they feed off of. They benefit from it. They feed off of the, su the suffering. They feed off of the sacrificing of others. Do you understand? So where are you sacrificing in your romantic relationship, in your family, where um, nobody respects you in your household, nobody listens to you? Well, you're running sacrificing energies. You always put yourself last. You always go without so everybody else has something. That's not selfless service. If I know that I'm the one that is the true leader of the family, that I know how to get things done, I know how to lead the family, I know how to take care of everybody, I better be fucking taken care of. Because for me to take care of you, I have to take care of myself. 
you don't need to run on fumes. And that never means that there aren't phases where, of course, you will. It's normal human life. My, my, my sole companion dog just had two surgeries back to back in, in five weeks of each other, I think it was. That was a rough five weeks. <laughs> that was a rough five weeks to have a two-year-old Cane Corso, 121 pounds, who doesn't feel pain, who is a beast, this powerful, majestic, athletic beast who doesn't want to chill out at all, <laughs> except when he's working and out in public. He's, he's very chill and mellow. He is not a couch potato. To keep that guy from ripping out his stitches and harming himself more, you know, and, and the, the sleepless nights and the amount of care and the extra work <laughs> was absolutely exhausting. Okay. It, it would take me probably 12 hours to tell you all the details of the hell that I went through. And it's not like I can't stop working. I have patients. I have, sorry, I don't have patients anymore. I have clients. I have meetings. I have mentorship that I do. I'm running an entire global organization. I'm recording podcasts. I'm doing all the things. So it was that on top of all of the things. It's not like I had time off and I had the free time. I had to do it all. Okay. And that isn't a sacrifice. That is selfless service. Because when he's healthy and he's cared for and he's nurtured and I'm giving of myself, he's healthy enough and healed as, and I can have him heal as fast as possible. And I'm not saying that from a, I control it or I'm impatient. I'm making sure everything is put in place so he can heal as fast as possible for his benefit. There's less risk and less chance of him getting hurt, ripping out stitches and all the things. If I'm doing all of that for him and then what I get back from him is what he always gives back to me because of it. That's a simple example, but it's still an example. Okay. That is selfless service. That's not sacrificing. Okay. Sacrifice means I'm willing to just suffer for the sake of suffering. Have I hit this in yet hard enough, deep enough, deeply enough? So the cult leaders that control this planet at all the levels that they control this planet, they literally energetically program sacrifice energies in order for you to consent to being a slave. That's the bottom line. In your life, how much do you sacrifice? Always put yourself last and, and your kids first. So guess what? Your sacrifice program teaches your fucking kids how to be entitled little fucks. That's what you're teaching your kids. Same side of uh, two sides of the, of the same coin. Do you remember what I started this with? Sacrifice can't exist without entitlement. Entitlement can't exist without sacrifice. If I'm in sacrificing energy, I am creating entitlement. If I am entitled and I'm running the entitlement programs, I'm forcing others, I'm creating sacrifice in others. Do you see it? Can you comprehend that? So how we create this at smaller levels, because the macro, the elites created on this massive collective scale. How we then play that out in our individual lives. Well, women have to sacrifice everything. They have to do everything. They have to go to work and earn money. They have to work full time. They have to sometimes work two jobs and carry the babies and bring life into this world. Give you life. And raise the children. They're sacrificing, sacrificing, sacrificing in order to get by, in order to survive. And the entitlement program, more often than not, goes to the men. Where the entitlement is, I deserve you. You owe me. You're supposed to give me sex because we're married or in a relationship. But she's not an object. You don't own her. She isn't fucking property. She's not a motherfucking object. You don't have rights over her body. She's a sovereign being. You're not entitled to her physical body. You're not entitled to sex from her. And this goes the other way too, by the way. Not that that part's very common, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. 
women can absolutely run programs like that too. The entitled program where you have to please me and have sex with me because I want it. I know. Relax, women. I know. It almost doesn't exist. But it can. And I'm calling those women out too. Okay? So these are the programs we're running. And then we'll bitch and complain about the taxes that we pay. All the money that's being, we're being robbed blind. And yet the reason why that system, that matrix is still held in place is because you hold the, the matrix of entitlement and sacrifice in place in your own fucking life, in your own fucking home, with your own partners and people you date and spouses and children. If you are a parent, especially mothers, I'm calling you the fuck out right now, women. If you're running the sacrifice program that's been imprinted onto you and brainwashed because it has, if you still run those programs and you have children and you do everything for them all the time, you're teaching them to grow up as entitled fucks. You're holding the big sadistic matrix in place because you're putting it in place and creating it at your level. That's what holds it in place in the macro. You're creating it and living it out in the micro. Stop teaching your kids to be motherfucking entitled. Teach them to be team players, to function in oneness. Toddlers should be helping you, quote unquote, cook dinner. Every single person in that household should be participating in the food making and the preparation of it and the cleaning up. And if certain people aren't home in time for the first part of it, they take the second part of it, the cleanup. If you prepared it, then other people clean up. That's working in a system of oneness. It's okay to say, well, if you cook, then I'll clean, then I'll clean it. Right. Or we cook together. We clean together. How many of you live in a household? Why are you letting your kids walk away from the table and just clean up their own plate? What about all the other fucking dishes that need to be the food put in food containers? Those dishes need to either be hand washed or put in the dishwasher. All these things need to be put away. Why do they walk away and only take care of their own plate? Because you're teaching them to be entitled fucks. Knock it off, parents. They should be preparing food, setting the table, helping you. They should be cleaning up after you while you're cooking. If you're cooking and preparing food, oh, done with this. I'm going to wash this right now. That's what everybody in the house should be doing as a team. And when you have toddlers, they should be sitting in their high chair with a wooden spoon and a bowl and you're cutting up vegetables. Here you go. And you give them the vegetables so that they can practice stirring and mixing and cooking. So they're doing it with you. They're a part of it. That's oneness. You're teaching them the skills of living, of being independent, powerful, reliable, accountable. The first way of oneness, the way of responsibility. You're not teaching them how to be entitled fucks where you do everything for them, clean up after them, wash everything for them, do everything, cook all the things. They should be learning with you, doing it with you. That's what childhood is for. And the other extreme of that, so that's a sacrifice parent. That's a parent that, that runs sacrifice programs that need to be healed. The entitled parent forces his children to sacrifice. You can't do anything if there's a toy out of place. <laughs> That's an entitled parent thinking, I want this environment to be spick and span. You're grounded because you left a shoe on the floor. The other extreme, duality, remember at the beginning of this episode? You're creating duality, which creates dysfunction. So the other extreme, no, we're not creating the enslaved. See, the entitled create slaves who sacrifice so that they can benefit from it. As a parent, which one are you? Do you fall in one of those two categories? We used to have baby boomers were psychopathic fucking entitled motherfuckers. Gen Xers, their children, I'm Gen X. A lot of Gen Xers who went on to have children, they turned into the sacrificing parent. 
I'll give you everything and I'll go without. I want you to have a better childhood and a better life. And you created the next generation of entitled fucks. You see how this works? If you function in sacrifice, you're creating entitlement in others. Both must exist. <laughs> that is the downfall, the negative energetic side effect when you don't learn applied energetics. This is what you're creating in the world and you don't even realize you're creating it in the world. Why don't my kids appreciate what I do for them? Maybe because you're a little too gentle on the gentle motherfucking parenting and you don't know how to give actual consequences. The people who are entitled think that that means abusing your kids and being rigid and super strict. And you can't tell the fucking difference between the two that shows how low your level of consciousness is. That's never a judgment. It's a wake up call. I'm teaching you so that you can wake up to it so that we can stop doing this in the world. When you're willing to sacrifice what you teach everyone around you, they're entitled to you. You're not fucking entitled to me. The fuck do you think you are? Bring that entitlement shit to me. You're not entitled to be coached by me, healed by me, taught by me for fucking free all the time. In selfless service, I have given so much. It isn't even funny. So much to people. When I am guided that that is the highest thing to do in this moment, I have done it. And I don't ever question my soul, my divine team. This is a scenario selfless service means to give for free or for next to nothing or for a donation or for whatever. When that is the guidance of divinity, I follow that. I am the way of trust. I am the way of loyalty and the way of selfless service and the way of integrity in all the ways I do that. And when there are other scenarios running, like when you think you're entitled, you should be giving it away for free. Really? Really? When we live in the upside down world, you don't think a motherfucking professional athlete who throws a ball and plays a fucking game for a living. That person should be making millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. We don't fucking question that for shit, do we? But somebody who changes people's lives and is helping to heal the entire fucking planet, all of you amazing warriors and healers out there, you're actually changing the planet for the better. You're saving humanity. You're participating in a spiritual war and you're on the right side of things. You shouldn't be the ones making millions of dollars to make your mission easier on you, to make it easier for you to heal this planet and completely dismantle the evil on this planet. But somebody who can throw a fucking ball accurately on target at a moving target is the one who should be making 38 million fucking dollars. Are you stupid? So the healers, you see the brainwashing, the healers, the ones who could make the most difference and save the planet and every being on it should sacrifice and go without and not be able to survive and not be able to afford housing for themselves and food. They should sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. So the entitled fucks in the world that don't make much of a difference with anything all they do is take, 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 receive, receive, receive. We're keeping that in place every time you think a healer should heal for fucking free. Or, or a, a spiritual teacher, a powerful teacher should teach you for free every time. Or you should be coached for free. This should be free. Stop with the level of stupidity. You run sacrifice programs. And you're keeping the cult leaders of the world, those sadistic motherfuckers, in charge, in place, in their comfort zone, receiving the billions and billions of dollars they receive in order to continue to enslave and control all of humanity, all because you can't wake the fuck up to your own sacrifice programs. And you can't wake the hell up to the elitist programs, the entitlement programs that you yourself run when you think you're entitled to a woman's body, for example. 
that you think you have the right to take away her rights. That entitlement bullshit. You're a sadistic cult leader when that's where you function. But I'm not. Yes, you are. Because that's the matrix you're holding in place energetically. And you've been manipulated and tricked and brainwashed into doing it. It's time to wake up for real. You are not entitled to anyone or anything. That's the old world. And you better stop sacrificing. Acting like everything should be given away for fucking free just because. Because you're spiritual. That makes me more elevated and more enlightened. No, it doesn't. It makes you stupid and brainwashed. It makes you dumb and blind. You're too unconscious to see the programs you're running in your everyday lives. And you think you're going to change this world because you put positive fucking spiritual memes on your goddamn social media pages. Wake up. Wake up. That's what we need to wake up to. And some of you spend all your time. Oh my God, her tone of voice. I just can't even stand it. She just seems angry. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, guys, the level of fucking ignorance here. And then we want the world to actually change. Like we can't even get out of Whew. You need to be punched in the face sometimes because you can't even see what programs you're running when it comes to the sacrificing. I'll put myself last. Oh, I don't need to get paid ever in life. And it's okay if the lights get turned out and I get kicked out of my house and I can't pay my mortgage and I'm homeless because, you know, it makes me more spiritual. It just shows that I'm a more spiritual, elevated, enlightened person. No, it doesn't. You're a fucking idiot. You're running programs of sacrifice, which means you're holding and anchoring in energetically the elites of the world who are ruling the world and enslaving everybody. Knock that shit off. Aren't you done? Are you tired of this yet? This reality that's so psychotic, that's so evil and dark and violent and controlling <laughs> where you have no rights. <laughs> Aren't you tired of that yet? Especially in the United States of America. It's only going to change when you realize these are the programs that you run. And that by not taking care of yourself, I am the way of selfless service. I vibrate at that frequency. That is what I offer to other people. The way of selfless service doesn't mean I'm dumb and blind and unconscious enough and brainwashed enough to run sacrifice programs where I suffer. So you think I'm good, good, and you validate me. Oh, maybe you'll validate me as an authentic spiritual teacher if I speak a certain way. Get the fuck out of here. I am what I am. And so are you. Wake up to the programs that you run, because if you can't heal them in yourself, they don't get healed in the macro. Oh, no, but I'm going to run for office and change policies and that'll do it. You can't be that stupid. That ignorant, we got to get out of the ignorance and being so stupid. And I'm choosing these words on purpose. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it without jarring you awake. Because unfortunately, most people aren't ready to not be jarred awake yet. When you are, <laughs> I can say it a little differently. I won't need to say it in a punch in the face kind of way anymore. Because you're healing the programs within yourself that create the sacrifice energy nonsense. That stuff's got to go. So if I am in the vibrational frequency of sacrifice, 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 what I create with people around me is entitlement, entitle, entitlement, entitlement. This is why some of you who run these programs are like, I don't understand why people don't appreciate me. But there's no reason to respect you or appreciate you. You're in a sacrifice energy. That's a weak, powerless, pathetic energy. It's not judgment. That's what it is. When you learn applied energetics and you learn to read each and every vibrational frequency that shows up, you're like, oh my God, this sacrificing energy feels terrible. What am I doing? And when you're trapped in that energy and you've run those programs in your life and your relationships and your parenting and your whatever in the collective, 
when you're in that energy, it can feel like entitlement when you first start doing for yourself and healing and becoming more powerful where I'm going to take care of me. And it's like, oh my God, I feel entitled. That's not entitlement energy. It just means you haven't learned yet the art of subtle energies to discern the difference between what entitlement energy feels like, because it's gross, bleh, the controlling energy and entitlement energy. This You feel what this feels like, like feeling textures of different fabrics. You feel the textures of different energetic frequencies. Oh my gosh, that entitlement has um, control in it. And you can feel that in sight of the entitlement. So you learn the different layers that make up a certain frequency. This is the art of subtle energies. By the way, I, I have to say this. A lot of classes we will be offered and we will be offering at Masters of Self University in 2025. You can take these classes where you learn the art of subtle energies and how to um, one of our classes is the art of subtle energies and how to, um, com I don't know the, I don't, I don't know if I want to say this out loud yet. <laughs> My apologies. I'm pausing because I don't know if I want to say it out loud. Um, yet only because it's not on the website yet, but recoding your DNA, learning how to recode your DNA and learning the art of subtle energies in order to recode your DNA. And doing both, not one or the other. There are two separate things, but I connect those and teach you how to do that at the same time, okay? Because you can recode your DNA and know actively how to recode your DNA. You can't do that and see the results with it for the most part when you know nothing about applied energetics. That, that's the point I want to make here, okay? So um, student enrollment for 2025, go check out mastersofselfuniversity.com and get a free consultation. And um, if it's not up yet, when you hear this podcast, don't worry. On our website, we will have student enrollment for 2025. And you'll see all the classes that we offer for 2025. And you can come enroll as a student uh, at Masters of Self University part time or full time. It's up to you. But just know that that's coming. If you don't see it on the website yet, um, we offer it. It's here. So just schedule a free consultation and then we'll we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one and just tell you all about our classes and programs that will be offered next year. Um, and we can enroll now. We can save your spot and enroll you now, just so you know. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, um, if you are in the program of entitlement, then you're forcing other people to sacrifice in order to feed your selfishness. Does that make sense? That's what you're automatically creating. And you are automatically creating that by default because you are a powerful divine being who can create and does create things like this while you're here. You are God incarnated. Do you understand this? Every being is God incarnated. Literally. You are God incarnated. If you in your human form, being God incarnated, you are so powerful that if you are in sacrifice vibrational frequency, that dysfunctional, pathetic, enslavement, suffering frequency, that's what you're in vibrationally, then you are creating by default the vibrational dualistic reality of entitlement in order to match the frequency that you are in in sacrificing. That's how applied energetics works, guys. You have to be willing to go deeper and deeper and learn the energetic nature that you are and how you are creating these things in your life and in the world on a much more elevated level than what currently exists. This is why all new classes are being offered on stuff like this next year at Masters of Self University because it's time that we learned this at this level. Okay? So... Where are you sacrificing versus giving just selfless service? And it's okay if you can't discern the difference between the two right now. That just shows where you're at. There's no shame in that. But try your best to become aware. Like, oh my gosh, I don't even know the difference between me sacrificing and being in that disgusting negative energy 
or I'm creating entitlement in the world because I'm willing to be the one that sacrifices and gets enslaved and used and my energy siphoned and my finances siphoned and my resources siphoned and my whatever, right? So just understand that's how this works. Where do you show up like that in your life? And again, it is okay if you're not quite sure when you show up in selfless service, holy shit, I don't know the difference between the two. I want to give, I want to be a giving person. I want to be the way of selfless service. Of course I do, but holy shit, am I actually just pathetic and, and weak and vibrating at a sacrifice energy? I don't even know the difference between the two. You guys, if you have that realization, I applaud you. That is beautiful to have that realization. That means you see it. That's the first step. So if that's where you're starting at, fabulous. If you are entitled and you think, I expect from you, you owe me, you know, and this is a good, this is one of the most common ones. That's why I bring it up several times because it's easy to understand. You know, you owe me sex. I'm supposed to have sex with you because we're in a committed relationship or we're married. Oh my God, that entitlement is disgusting. Entitlement means you objectify the other person. You objectify the other person, whether you realize it or not, when you are in the vibrational frequency of entitlement. Take a deep breath. It gets worse. You dehumanize them automatically. You're turning them into objects. You're taking the divinity right out. You don't see their divinity. You see them as slaves. You see them as objects that you're here to use and abuse to rape and in every way possible, even if you're not literally physically doing that. You're still doing that energetically because you're taking their dignity. You're dehumanizing them. You're demeaning them because they're here to make you happy. They're here to support you. They're here to give to you. They're here to serve you, be subservient to you. That's the entitlement side of things. And that is the biggest matrix that has been created on this planet, that entitlement sacrifice matrix that creates people that dehumanize, that use, abuse, and enslave. And then the other side of that coin are the enslaved whose energies are being siphoned, whose resources and finances are being siphoned, being stolen and robbed from them. And you're in an energy of suffering and sacrificing your energy, your time, your emotional stability and health, your mental and psychological health because you're in survival mode and suffering all of the time. Do you understand? So those two major programs, sacrifice and entitlement, basically represent our collective and the elites that rule the world. And now you have a better understanding of those programs, how they run, how they work, how they function energetically. One creates the other only because we still live in a world of created duality. So as I wrap things up here, As I wrap things up here, and I would love to hear if you understood this and what your comments are below. So please, please comment below if, if something has been ignited in you or you had an epiphany or a realization on what you heard today. The created duality, we only function in it still because we keep it in place and we keep recreating it. There is no such thing in the future in an enlightened world that duality exists. It doesn't. And I say this with respect. I don't say this to put anybody down at, or with judgment. Anybody who says duality always must exist, that's the world that is full of shit. They, they, they don't know fucking anything. That is bullshit. That's more programming to keep us where we are. Oneness, there is no duality in oneness. And this is what I'm here to teach and with the foundation that I'm here to lay for this world. It's part of what I'm here to do in my soul mission. I'm here to anchor in the ways of oneness, those vibrational frequencies so that we can become them and we can create an enlightened world of oneness. Duality doesn't exist here. It doesn't need to. It's bullshit. Get rid of it. 
it creates nothing but harm. It doesn't mean differences go away. That's ridiculous. We're here to be different. <laughs> An elephant is very different than me in this manifested form, very different. And yet that is God incarnated and so am I. We're here to experience God in all of the differences that she can be because that's how miraculous she is. My dog is God incarnated and so are my cats and so is my husband. And so are my friends. And so are the amazing, incredible warriors that are the certified coaches of oneness at Masters of Self University that are certified in this work. And so is every single client that I have ever had in my entire adult life and any client or any student that I teach, every single one of them, you are all God incarnated in a different form. That's the miracle of all of this. Those differences are beautiful and they're amazing. The mystical professors that we have at Masters of Self University that will be teaching these amazing classes starting in 2025, every one of them is God incarnate. You get to go take classes from God. Doesn't that sound silly and absolutely incredible all at the same time? Do you see it? So, you know, fast forward in an enlightened world of oneness consciousness. Duality will cease to exist. Differences on a spectrum. Duality is polar extreme opposites that keep dysfunction and suffering in place. Easiest way I can put it. Oneness doesn't mean same. Oneness means a healthy balance where we all are interconnected as the way of connection, as the way of harmony, which is the 20th way of oneness, of the universal ways of oneness. We function in harmony with all of our differences, all of our gifts. We benefit one another. Because I benefit from you with what gives, gifts you have to offer, what skills and talents and genius that you have that, that could be very different than mine. And you get to benefit from me because of my gifts, my skills, my genius, what I came here to offer in selfless service from a level of integrity to everybody that, that I come in contact with the way of wisdom that I can offer, the teaching, the guidance, the psychic abilities I have, the healing abilities I have, all the things that I came here with. You may have to some degree, you may have more than me, you may have almost none of that compared to me, and yet you still have the gifts and the genius. You're different, but we're the same in the fact that we're different and we're God incarnated to be different because as we're different in this physical form, you might be a genius at regenerative farming and growing food. I'm not. <laughs> That's not my soul's mission. I, I started a community garden. There's a community garden. We work together. We're figuring it out. We're, we're trying to grow our own food to whatever degree we can achieve in oneness. But that's not my genius. That's not what I'm here to do full time. That's not what I'm here to offer the world. So as other people come in, and they are the geniuses of that. That's how we balance each other out and function in oneness. We're different, but we're not so extreme that we're creating duality. We're not creating where one has to sacrifice and suffer for so the other can benefit. Does that make sense? And that is the world we were born into. And that's the world, the matrix that we continue to keep alive energetically when you yourself are running those motherfucking entitlement programs wake up to it. When you yourself are running those goddamn sacrifice programs and you're not willing to stand up and tell somebody to shut the fuck up. Don't talk to me that way. Don't project onto me that way. We are done here. I don't sacrifice in that way. And if that's what you want to create because you're entitled, I'm putting an end to it right now. 
you have to connect to your power and heal these programs, people. If you want the world to change, you must change. It is that simple. And in order to change the degree that we need to change and see a healthy, massive difference on this planet, you have to change these programs. These are the anchoring programs of the elites, those psychopathic lunatics that rule this world. These are the ones that anchor them in place more than any other programs we run. Wake up to that. Please receive that in this episode. See it. And if you want help to change it, go to mastersofselfuniversity.com. Okay, dive in. You can you can enroll now for our classes for 2025. Learn all this stuff on a specific level, like the art of subtle energies. You want to come learn that? Come learn it. Enroll. Get a free consultation and, and figure out how you can do it. Okay? Um, otherwise, check back on the website when we have everything up and ready for you to see what we have to offer. A lot of amazing, incredible classes that we're offering starting 2025. Full curriculums, full programs. It's very exciting. Okay? So you want to check out more. You want to learn how to heal these programs. Keep following. Like, share this stuff out. And come back and listen to the next one. Thank you for your time today. Always in oneness. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next episode.